Hello friends. Today that we are going to learn how geologists put together all of the pieces of information that they have about rocks to try to identify them. Now, that being said, I want to tell you that identifying rocks um, can be a very, very challenging task. So that's not something we're going to spend very much time on because I'll tell you, I have a hard time identifying a lot of rocks, in, except for ones that are pretty clear um, and common and um, I've become familiar with them over the years. But just to walk along and see a rock and be able to identify it is quite challenging. So these are the different properties of rocks that we have been talking about. If we were in class, um, what we would be doing is you would be choosing a rock, actually three different rocks. You would trace and draw the rock here. And then we would go through identifying the different properties of the rock. Uh, geologists use the combination of all of these different pieces of information in order to understand and identify a rock. It is not any one thing that um, they use. So let's just say I'm going to um, identify this rock from my rock number one. So if I were to write down the color of that rock, I would say it's kind of a gray, dark gray, to black rock, really kind of a charcoal gray color. And then I need to think about the luster. Is it shiny or is it dull? Well, I see some small crystals. So I would say um, um, I'm going to say shiny, small crystals. The size of the crystals can tell us a lot about where it may have formed. Is it smooth or is it rough? Well, it's kind of in between. It's not as smooth as, say, obsidian. That's very glassy. But I would say it's, um, hmm, I'm going to say it's semi-smooth. Rough would be more like this type of a texture that is really bumpy and quite rough. Okay, now streak test. The streak test is one where a geologist would take a piece of, this is just a piece of tile. It's a porcelain tile and by um, by rubbing a rock on this porcelain tile, I can see if it makes a mark or not. This one does make a mark. It makes a black streak. Now we need to talk a little bit about the difference between a scratch and a streak. A streak is meaning it actually writes on the surface. It, it's actually leaving some of the, the minerals on top. A scratch is when it's actually cutting into the surface and breaking away part of the surface of the porcelain. Now, not every rock will leave a streak. Just because it's black does not mean it will leave a mark. And the color of the streak can be telling. Oh, that one definitely leaves a mark. You can see that pieces of the rock are actually breaking up and making sediment here on my rock. It's interesting, with white rocks, it can be challenging to tell. If I can put my finger on the top and it, it wipes off, then that tells me that is a streak, not a scratch. There are some rocks, let's see here, if I can find one, there we go. So this is kind of a brownish streak. Um, there are some rocks where it's like a black um, rock that will make a red streak. So that's interesting too. Okay, 
Now I'm gonna set that aside, and I'm gonna make a prediction of the hardness of my rock. I can kind of dig my fingernail into it. Nothing's happening there. It seems like it's pretty hard, not breaking off, but it did write pretty easily on the porcelain. So I'm gonna guess that on a scale of one to 10, 10 being the hardest and one being the softest, I'm gonna guess that this rock is a seven. That's my prediction or my best guess about what it is. Now it says hardness test results. In order to do that, we're gonna actually come to this piece of paper and this is Moe's scale of hardness. It says starting with your fingernail, check off the box for each item that your rock can scratch. It will scratch only items with a lower hardness level. Circle the check for the last test it passes. I'll show you that at the end. That number is your rock's hardness number. And then we're gonna write that over on that this page right here. So this geologist named Mo, um, his last name was Mo, M-O-H, he came up with this test because he said, you know, we need to be able to have a scale that we can use with things of a known hardness to compare a rock to. So the very softest rock that he chose as one to compare to is this one. This is talc. This is what baby powder is made out of. And you can see that it is so soft, it's actually coming off on my fingers. Now, um, we've talked about how sediment can actually be made out of the exoskeletons of marine organisms. I wanna take a second to talk a little more about that. This talc is actually formed from that. They are microscopic organisms called plankton that drift in the ocean. It's what um, blue whales and humpback whales eat. And there are billions of them in the ocean. And when they die, the um, exoskeleton of their body falls to the bottom and it's filled with calcium. So talc, limestone, marble are all made with um, those materials. So that is talc, I'm all dusty. Okay, so I know for certain that this rock is going to be much harder than the talc. You can see the talc is on the surface of my rock that means this material is softer than this one. So yes, I was able to scratch talc. That's number one. Number two, here's a common item, which is my fingernail is about this hardness, but so is gypsum. So this is gypsum. Gypsum is a very common rock. It is, um, the walls in our homes, the white material that's behind, underneath the paint of our house is gypsum. Um, it's one of the main materials in the Earth's crust. And it's about the same hardness as my fingernail. So it's kind of hard to tell based on scratching one or the other, but if I take something hard and I try, or harder, and I try to scratch my nail, now I'm getting the white talc um, on my nail, but if I use this rock, I don't know if you can see there, I'm actually making a dust out of my fingernail. This is scratching my fingernail and I can also see that some of the white dust of the gypsum is coming off and I'm able to scratch the surface of the gypsum coming off onto my rock there. So yep, I was able to scratch number two. So now I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep going. This is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, now next is called calcite. And this is a pretty easy rock to identify because it always forms in these straight planes. They're, excuse me, flat planes. But with this angle here, that you can see. So that crystal formation is the same in all calcite. 
So let's see if I'm able to scratch. I'm trying to do this in a place where you can see. Let's see if you can see it on here. Oh yeah, look at that. That scratched the calcite really easily. And if I rub it onto my rock, oh yeah, look at that dust. It's riding on the surface, which is breaking up the pieces. That means my rock is definitely harder than the calcite. Ah, what's the common item here, Penny? So I'm gonna get my little kit. Let's see if I've got any pennies in the kit I brought home. There's a dirty penny, a very dirty penny. You can see these kits have been used for many, many years at Hellbrook. So I will try to wipe that off a little bit. The copper oxidizes in these boxes and gets a coating on it. That, But one of the nice things about that coating is it makes it really easy to see if I scratch it or not. So I'm going to take my rock, drag it hard across the surface of the penny, and if you can see that line right there, you can see that I was able to scratch through the surface, not just of the stuff, the uh, the oxidation, but also through the copper. You can see brand new fresh copper right there on the surface. So I was able to also do the penny. Now, if I the butter knife um, is about three and a half, but some of the materials of butter knives can be made from different things. So I prefer to just go on to number four. Okay, I have here an iron nail, and for four, four is also fluorite. Now, fluorite is a rock, can, can come in many colors. It can come in a light green, a purple, depending on the um, any other, they call it impurities, meaning it's not 100% fluorite. The, um, anything else that gets into it is what causes that color. So I'm gonna take my rock first on the iron nail. I'm gonna hold it at an angle, and I'm going to see if I can scratch through. Hmm. I'm not sure about that. Let's see. It's got a rusty coating on the top. It does seem like I'm scratching it though. I'm going to get in another edge of the rock and try again. And that looks, that looks quite a bit like scratching. Sometimes it's hard to tell, so I like to have two things to test at each level. Here's the calcite. Excuse me, fluorite. Oh yeah, I'm really scratching that. Did you see that dust it made? There we go. Okay, so that gives me a little more confidence that it did scratch number four. Okay, number five, that's the hardness of the enamel on our teeth. That's why eating or drinking soda is not very good for us because it erodes away the enamel on our teeth. But we're not gonna use our teeth. <laughs> we're going to use Appetite, which is this rock here. And that will help us to um, see a little bit more. I'm gonna rub this clean. It's been rubbed with a lot of rocks. Okay, let's see if this rock, this unknown rock, is harder or softer than the Appetite. I'm gonna try to find a clear area. Hmm. Some of these rocks, it can be difficult to tell. I, I really am not certain if I'm scratching it or not. Hmm. So what I'm gonna do, since I'm not sure about the appetite, I'm gonna go down here to the glass. You can see this has been scratched a lot of times. Let's see on the black, if you, you can't see that real well. But, um, 
this glass has been scratched many times, so I have to try to find a spot where, let's see, I can bring my iPad case over and that's a good black background. See all those scratches on there? So I need to find a spot that has not been scratched before to see if I can scratch it. And I'm pushing pretty hard. Yeah, if I push pretty hard, that did scratch on it. When I was just going light like this, there was nothing. But when I really dig it in, and I'm adding a fair amount of pressure, I can feel it kind of cut into the surface of the glass. So it was able to scratch the glass. Okay. So if it did scratch the glass, then that tells me that it would also scratch the appetite in a tooth. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and do that. Feldspar is a special rock. I really like feldspar. This is what feldspar looks like. It's kind of pink. I'm gonna show you a piece of jewelry I have with some feldspar in it. Um, it's this one here. I bought it at a farmer's market. And that pink there is feldspar. So, Feldspar is another very common mineral in our Earth's crust, and there's lots of different kinds of, of feldspar. Okay, what did I do with my rock? There it is. Here is the feldspar. Let's give it a shot. I'm going to find as smooth of a surface as I can find. Now, do you see the dust that's coming off there? That is the dust of my rock. So that tells me that my rock is softer than the feldspar. I am not at this point able to scratch that feldspar. So just to be sure though, I'm gonna keep going here and I'm going to come down to the quartz and the ceramic plate. We know that since my rock was able to write on the ceramic plate, it did not scratch it, so it's softer than that. Um, here is some quartz. If I try to scratch this quartz, it's writing on the surface. That tells me my rock is softer than that. Topaz is this one right here. Um, Topaz is this rock, and I'm going to try to scratch it here. Again, it's leaving a gray dust that I can wipe off with my finger. And then this very special rock, this is corundum, or corundum, depending on how you say it. and cool thing about corundum, it is the next hardest mineral to diamond. So diamonds are so rare and expensive that we don't go up to that level. Um, it's the only thing that that's at a level 10. But corundum is close enough that we can um, use plenty of it. I have plenty of it to test. So corundum is used in a lot of tools because of its hardness. And um, these, look at the interesting patterns. Look at this um, hexagonal shape. This is the natural crystal shape that it came in. It was not um, just cut to this shape. You can see the hexagonal form here. This one's a little bit more rough, but you can um, see that hexagonal shape there as well. Okay, so I'm going to see if I can scratch and again, black dust. Okay, so what that tells me is that my rock, this is the last level it was able to scratch. So my rock is actually about the level, so it says here, circle the check for the last test it passes. That's this one. That number is my rock's, hard, my rock's hardness number. So that check is a 5.5. So that tells me if I bring back this paper here, my rock's hardness was a 5.5 on Moe's scale of hardness. So with this combined information, I could look up and find out and identify my rock if that's important to me. But what's more important 
then identifying a rock is to be able to know about the three different types 